Rocky. And she said, now think of nothing, like you do with your painting. And then I was swimming. So you see, it wasn't me at all. It was Chalky. Fast asleep. Fast asleep. Good. Chalky. Matthew has built up an elaborate fantasy system. That's all. I cannot come to you anymore. Forget me, Please Matthew. Please help leave me, Chalky. Forget. Don't go away. Forget. It's Chalky's medal, not mine. She's the one that saved me and Polly. That's not true! Matthew! Matthew! What's happened? It's Matthew. He's missing. Missing? Yeah, yeah. I really think Mary ought to tell you. Matthew didn't come home from school. Well, wasn't he with Colin? No, Colin had choir practice. He had to stay on later, otherwise... Oh, yes, of course. Look, now David's home, I'd better get back to my lot. Matthew will turn up soon. You'll see. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Phil. Anyway, call me if there's anything I can do. Uh, yeah, thanks, Phil. Good night. Bye. You've no idea where he might have gone? No. Oh, David. Uh, you've asked the school? Teachers? Friends? Everybody I can think of. Oh, I'm so worried. Will you hear such dreadful things? Oh, yes, I know, but... I mean, I've rung all the hospitals for miles around. The police? Yes, they came round. They searched the house, the garden. They talked to Colin and Phil and the schools. Oh, David, I'm so scared. Yes, of course, darling, but there's bound to be a perfectly simple explanation. Well, like what? I keep imagining all sorts of things. Well, I can see him. It's that chalky business, isn't it? Well, I thought all that was over and done with after he saw the Thorpe. So did I. I thought the Thorpe was right. I thought that the fantasy would break up and dispel and that that would be that. Things are never that simple. No. And Matthew's been so withdrawn since. Well, he never says anything. Not to me, anyway. And now this. Did you tell the police anything about Chucky? No, of course not. What did you tell them? Well, I said that he'd been a bit upset lately, what with all the fuss about the rescue and everything. Good. Well, you don't think that he... No, of course I don't, and you mustn't either. Look, Chucky going away has been a shock to him. Whatever she was, he got used to having her around. He needed to adjust. If he was going to do anything silly, he'd have done it a fortnight ago, but nothing of the kind ever entered his head, I'm sure of it. I'm sure you're right. But that's what makes it all the more difficult to understand. I mean, he's not an insensitive boy. He must know how we're feeling, so why? Why? Two, three, six, nine. Yes, this is David Gore. Yes. Yes, uh, I see. Uh, when was this, Mr. Bollett? Right, thank you very much. I'll, I'll let the police know at once. Thank you. Well? That was uh, Mr. Bollard. His son's in the ear about Matthew. Yes. he just seen the papers. He says he saw Matthew on Friday on the way home from school. Well. He was talking to a man a little way down from the school gates. He says Matthew got into a car with him, a Mercedes, he thinks, and they drove off. No! No! Hello? Uh, this is David Gore. Could I speak to Inspector Max, please? In Surrey, the search continues for 12-year-old Matthew Gore, who has now been missing for five days. In spite of a massive hunt by police and volunteers, there is still no trace of Matthew, who was abducted from near his school last Friday by a man in a dark-coloured Mercedes car. Matthew was dressed in his... 
Darling, we mustn't give up hope. I'll never see him again, I know it. Excuse me. Can you help me, please? Yes, what is it? I'm afraid I'm lost. I can't get home because I haven't got any money. Yo, I've got a problem, haven't you? Now, where exactly is I? I'm near. I'm near in Surrey. And what would your name be? Matthew. Matthew Gore. You stay right there, Matthew. PC 297 Fox Control. Mummy! <laughs> oh, my darling. Oh, I thought I'd never see you again. Are you all right? Really, really all right? Yes, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for all you've done. Well, I'm afraid it wasn't very much in the end, was it? You did everything you could. Come on, Matthew. Let's get you home. I've got all your favourite things waiting at home for you for tea. Well, I've already had a soup tea here in the canteen. Oh. I expect I can manage a bit more. Well, goodbye, Mrs Gore. Well, Matthew, I hope that's the last time you ever get into a car with anyone you don't know. Well, thank you again. I wonder if I could just have a quick word with you alone, Mr Gore, before you go. Yes, of course. You go on, darling. I'll be with you in a second. Well, first of all, I can put your mind at rest. Matthew's come to no harm. No harm at all, as far as we can tell. Are you sure? Well, the police surgeon's given him a pretty thorough checkover. Right as rain. Thank heaven for that. Yes. It's odd, though. He doesn't even seem to have been frightened. It's quite the most considerate kidnapping I've ever heard of. You don't know why it happened, then? Not really. But there's a couple of things you ought to know. Oh? Yes. First, he appears to have had a number of injections in both arms. Now, the doctors have no idea what was injected, but whatever it was, it doesn't seem to have left any after effects. All the same, we think you ought to keep an eye open for any delayed reactions. I see, right. Now, the second thing is even more curious. Matthew is convinced he's been in a car crash and that his leg was fractured. What? Well, there's nothing to support that except some slight abrasions on his left leg, which according to the doctor, seemed consistent with the use of a plaster cast. But no fracture, you say? No. Matthew says it was in plaster, and that the people at the hospital gave him a new treatment which made it mend very quickly. But we've had x-rays taken, there's no sign of a break. The hospital? That's what he said. Matthew doesn't appear to realise that he was kidnapped at all. Your appetite obviously hasn't suffered any ill effects. That was lovely. Good. Well, now that you've refuelled, why don't you tell us all about it? Again? I keep having to tell everybody. Well, you haven't told us yet. <laughs> no. Well, I was coming home from school, and this car had stopped. And a man got out and sort of wandered and looked up and down the road as if he was lost. Well, as I was passing him, he said, Excuse me, we're looking for Densham Road. So, of course, I told him how to get to it. He said, since I obviously knew it well, could I tell him whereabouts in Densham over to a house called Coppins, where Mr Gore lived? I see. So you told him that was our house? Yes. And what? That's a funny thing. Because after that I can't remember anything till I woke up in hospital. I knew it was a hospital because it was all white. I was in a white bed. The walls were white and bare and terribly clean. It was a nurse. He was terribly clean, too. I discovered I couldn't move my leg. And the nurse said not to try because I'd been in a car accident. It had been broken. I said I couldn't remember anything about an accident. And she said that was quite normal. And lots of people don't because of the ammo amnesia. She asked if my leg hurt. When I said no, she said, that was good. It's because I'd been injected with a new drug that stopped the pain. Not to worry, because they were using another new drug, which heals bones very quickly, especially young bones like mine. The only bad thing was, I had to keep on having injections. There were two or three doctors who came to see me regularly, and they all said how well I was doing. It was a bit boring sometimes, 
but they gave me some books. They said they were sorry they didn't have a spare radio, but they gave me a cassette player and piles of tapes. The food was very good. I wish you could have come to see me. I did write to you, twice. It's a good job I wasn't there long. Anyway, yesterday they took the plaster off and said my leg had mended perfectly and I'd be able to go home later on. They had a big black car waiting for me with a chauffeur in the front. The doctor came in the back with me. Then we had a drink out of two flasks. There was coffee for him and cocoa for me. Then I felt tired and went to sleep. That was after you had the cocoa? Yes. And when I woke up, it was very odd because I was in a different car all by myself in daylight. And when I got out, I discovered I was in Birmingham. So I thought the best thing to do would be to find a policeman. And the rest we know. Yes, they drove me all the way from Birmingham to Hindmere in a police car. <laughs> it was super. You are lucky, Matthew. That's almost worth being kidnapped for. Kidnapped? Was I kidnapped, Dad? Well, it looks very much like it, yes. We've had half the country searching for you for the past week. But they weren't a bit like kidnappers. They made me better. Well, don't you worry about that now. You must be worn out after such a long day. Why don't you and Polly go up and get ready for bed? All right. Will you come up? In a minute, darling. Hello. Is Mummy asleep? Ages ago, and so should you be. I know. It's chalky. Okay. What about chalky? She's come back. She wants to talk to you. She's got some things she wants to tell you. Me? What sort of things? I don't really know. She wants to tell you herself. Like she talks to you, you mean? No. She says that only works with some people. Oh, I see, and I'm not one of them. <laughs> no. But she says it would take far too long for her to tell me and for me to pass it on to you. So she's going to try and do it through me. <laughs> well, I don't know. Oh, it's all right. Chucky's pretty sure she can do it, OK? All right, then, well, if this is going to take some time, don't you think you'd be better off in bed? You'd be much more comfortable. Mm. Yes. Yes, Chucky thinks that's a good idea. I am going to think of nothing. Listen, Matthew. Matthew? It is Chucky speaking. I have to explain some things to you. It is not easy because I can only use Matthew's words, vocabulary. Hi. Very well, I'll do my best to follow you. I shall not come back again after this. You will be glad to know. What are you, Chucky? I am an explorer. No. Scout. I mean, teacher. Where are you from? Far away. Many... I do not know how far. I was sent here to find out what kind of planet this is. Sent? How? Only my mind is here. Because mind has no mass. It takes no time to travel. So scouts are sent out in this way. You mean there are more of you? Not here, no. Only when a scout makes a... a favourable report on a planet are others sent to check. They may send a ship of... of colonists. I see. 
And when should we expect a ship here? This planet is no use to us. Few planets are. But if this planet is no use to you, then why did you stay? Because you have intelligent life. The rarest thing in all creation. It is a holy thing to be fostered and nurtured. That is why I have stayed here. Chucky, why can't you speak to me direct? It is very difficult to explain. Perhaps now that you have accepted my existence, I will try. But you must be sure to unblock your mind. I'll do my best. This is, it is not my physical presence. It is just my energy field created through Matthew, I have to teach, to help you find a source of infinite power that will clear the way for your planet's future development. What is this source of infinite power? A form of cosmic radiation. My mission is to guide you towards its discovery and to teach you how to harness it. Through Matthew. That was my plan. But why? Why did you choose him out of all the thousands of millions of people on Earth? The subject must have the kind of mind which can communicate with us, and this is not common. It must also be a young mind, capable of development in the way we need. Matthew is one of the few people who fulfills all these requirements. What were you planning to do with him? I would have interested him in physics and gradually developed his understanding and ability until he succeeded in discovering and demonstrating the use of cosmic power. He would have become the most famous man in your world. Greater than your Newton or Einstein. Chucky, if you were sent to find someone like Matthew, why are you going away now that you have found him? Because I made too many mistakes. I should not have interfered with anything. I should merely have observed. You mean, you should have let Matthew and Polly drown in the river? That would have been the proper way, but I failed. Thank heaven. Yes, but because of my failure, I have created other dangers for Matthew. That is why I have to go. I don't understand. I told Matthew too much, too soon. He told lies, and then Thor, Thor hypnotized Matthew. When he heard what Matthew knew already and realized it was genuine, he became very excited. He is a greedy man, greedy both for money and for power. He saw a way of obtaining both, and that is why Matthew was kidnapped. Hope. And his friends, they injected him with drugs to make him talk. And when they had to accept the fact that I had left him, they decided to let him go. And Keep an eye on him for any sign that I have returned. But you won't come back? No. It would not be safe. But surely, if he has such a valuable potential... Valuable? Or dangerous? What would it be worth to your powerful energy interest to learn of a new source of energy which could destroy them? How much would a little boy's life count in removing that danger? I hadn't thought of that. 
As long as Matthew does not become involved in science, he will be safe. You must encourage him to take more interest in art. Yes. Yes, I understand. What will you do now? Will you go back to your own world? No. I still have my work to do here. I shall have to do it differently, giving a little to each of many men and women. It will take a long time. Probably it will not happen in your lifetime, but it will come. It will come. Goodbye, Chucky. And thank you. Goodbye, Matthew. Goodbye. That's very good. Hello, Dad. Yes, I'm quite pleased with it. And all your own work this time? Yes. Chucky was teaching me how to see things for a little while. Before she... Yes, she told me she had to go. She explained why properly this time. It's pretty hard the way she did it before. It's going to be a bit dull without her. She made me notice things. Can't you go on noticing things? The world's quite an interesting place. Oh, yes. Only it's kind of lonely. Yeah. Here. Go on, take it. Open it. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. <laughs> 